So you drove all over Philly. Yep. Okay. So what can I do for you, sir? Yep, so uh, I've had two pretty bad accidents, car accidents, uh, one where I was the passenger. Um, got hit pretty bad and led to some lower back pain, tried to stretch and work through that, then got into a, another car accident about uh, summer of last year where I was rear-ended. And um, that just kind of spiraled into lower back, lower hip pain, um, and then going back to the gym. I've had some other things pop up, you know, uh, shoulder pain here, uh, really bad pain in my right elbow, and then also in my knee. Um, I don't know if it's all from the car accidents or just, you know, not taking care of myself as much as, you know, I should have as a younger man. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of what brings me in. I also said during the consultation, you'll start about shin splints and uh, the foot. What's going on with those fellows as well? Yeah, so um, I recently tried to start running again to you know get back in shape and um it's not a stamina thing because i can work out for a long time but as soon as i start running even if it's for like half a mile i get really really bad shin splits both sides but um uh, here on the right leg it's it's mm -hmm. really painful um where like i have to stop like if i keep going it's just gonna be too painful to even continue. And like I said, it's not a stamina thing, I think, because other exercises like swimming or like other stuff I'm fine with and I don't get the shin splits, but running is just, it's a no-go right now and I'd like to get back to running. I hear that, okay. What's going on with the feet? Um, so on this side over here, the outer part, uh, anytime like I try to make an outward like movement like this, mm -hmm. I feel pain right here, not really on my toes, more like over here. Um, not as much on this side for some weird reason, um, but uh, yeah, and it, and it kind of clicks every once in a while, um, but uh, not too intense pain or anything like that. Can you do me a favor? Can you take the socks yep. off? Let's, yep. Let's take a look. Yep. Can you just stand for me as well? Yes, sir. Huh. So already I'm seeing this issue as well, okay? Because we have three arches, all right? We have the medial arch, transverse arch, and a lateral arch. But because this is bowing and sticking out on the outside, mm -hmm. this tells me your lateral arch, the outside arch collapsed. And then it may be hard, you know, it's, it's a little uh, challenge to see, but you see over here, this is too flat. Gotcha. Okay, so your transverse arch also collapsed too. So when I take a look at this one over here, see you're not bowing arc as right. much, right. but you do have you know that little interesting thing you got going on with <laughs> yeah. your feet, yeah, with the toes over there. Yeah. Uh, you also I see you do have bunions yeah. over here, and you have a very slight Taylor bunion, but not too bad. But this is clearly that lateral arch collapsed over there. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. And. Uh, okay. Also, you mentioned about let's break down the other parts. Um, the elbow, what's going on with the elbow? Yeah, so um, I, this was probably like eight years ago back. Um, I was at work and I fell and came down on my elbow ever mm -hmm. since then. Um, pulling, uh, pulling towards myself is fine, but any sort of like pushing downwards causes me a pretty good amount of pain. Um, and it's from right here. Uh, Show to me, where do you feel the pain? Right back here. Over this side. Yeah, and it, then it pops by itself. Sometimes the pop doesn't hurt. Other times it hurts really, really bad. Um, like I said, uh, it's loud enough where like my, my my partner, my girlfriend has noticed it, and she's like, "Wow, that's what's going on there." And I'm like, "I, I don't know." Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Going this way, it I can feel a little bit of pain now, and this way, not 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 so much really. So it's kind of weird. Okay. Okay. All right. What about the wrist? Yeah, um, this wrist right here. Um, so I don't have as much mobility. Here is fine. Here kind of hurts, and then it I can feel it like in my elbow. Let's well. have you stand up. Yep. On that one. Okay. So face towards me. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. See this one. I could bend. You see this over here. I could bend your wrist right. more here. This one doesn't. Oh, you can yep. really see this. It just barely moves. Yeah. See, this, I could easily extend yeah. it backwards this way. This one, uh-uh. No, it doesn't, it doesn't move at all whatsoever. Right. Okay. Yeah, there's something going on with his elbow over here. Yeah. And then, uh, Clumio, what's going on with his left shoulder here? Yep, so, uh, like, pushing, like, even right now, just clicked a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is mostly fine. Anytime I try to go back, I start feeling, like, tightness all up in here. 
um, and it just limits my range of motion like when I'm trying to work out or do things um, it's pretty painful all up like my trap here my shoulder not as much but like all of this is pretty tight and uh, yeah it just doesn't give me good range of motion what about raising that arm can you do that mm -hmm. with weights yeah with arms? weights it's fine yep like uh, I do lateral raises and it doesn't seem to hurt uh, but it does always feel tight whenever I do the lateral raises all up in here mm -hmm. what about going backwards no problems reaching it, it's a little if you, if you go like this yeah it's a little painful but not not like to the point where I can't do it. Like right now, it's super what tight. What reaching the top of there? Yeah, that's that. Okay, that yeah. Turn so I can see it better. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead, reach over here. Okay, how does that feel for you? Yeah, it kind of hurts. Yeah, okay, and I can. And what about reach behind you? Yeah. Okay, so I want to compare it to this side. Go ahead, reach behind you. Okay, and reach above. Reach behind again. See. This one I'm seeing already, it's gliding this way. And then, uh, do this one over here. See, it just locks. Right. So your scapula is stuck over here. So we're gonna take a closer look, see why this is jamming up and why you don't have enough nerve function from your neck into the shoulder blade, the scapula, to make it move more. So we're also gonna take a look and already I'm already seeing quite a bit of swelling here and here and here. So let's investigate that fella. Okay, anything else that you wanna address? Um, no, that's pretty much it. Like uh, we talked about earlier, just this mm -hmm. lower back pain, this hip um, mm -hmm. from sitting too long, like just on the drive over here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I took my wallet out so I wasn't sitting on it and that helped, but sitting more than like 10 minutes at a time, I have to readjust and I try to stretch, but it, it just doesn't seem to help. Gotcha, because I already see this is swelling and you're not pivoting too well on this region here either. Right. Okay, and also, uh, See, I believe, actually, yeah, we could, I could see yeah. it right here. Yeah. You mentioned the consultation, the deviated septum, and I could see your nose is yep. off that way. Yep. So, yeah, we'll take a look, see what's yeah. going on. Yeah, twice else. broken with this, unfortunately. Twice broken? Well, how yeah. did you do that? Uh, first time was an accident. Uh, second time was a uh, rough housing plane. So not really an accident, but an accident. And, uh, yeah, now this right nostril sometimes will get clogged up, and I can't really breathe, like, at night makes it hard to sleep. Yeah, it's not fun. Oh, someone sucking you with a nice cross. There you go, something like that. <laughs> All right, okay, so let's take a look, see what's going on. Yes, sir, okay. appreciate it. All right. See, there's something swollen and tight over here. Same story here, there's something swollen and tight here. I got a speed bump here. Mm -hmm. We got this pitting edema here. And we trace it down. So you got also more. This is like boggy right here, it's like a swamp. Mm -hmm. And I feel also, you see your erector spiny muscles and your rhomboids. See, everything's trying to stabilize this, this left scapula over here. Right. And so I can help explain why you have some problems when you go into you know, external rotation in there and extension. See, everything's all fired up here. All your erector spiny muscles here as well. See, and you got this, see? Bump, bump, bump. So you got three speed bumps here. So, yeah, I'm really curious what's going on with these these structures over here. See my tracing out here. See, it's even swollen. You got this one nice little button over here, swelling here. Hmm. So, so yeah, got a potential issue over here. And the reason why I want to look into these areas here because you mentioned about the shin splints. Mm -hmm. okay? The shin splints is the deep fibular nerve, and the nerve root is four and five. So the four is over here. That's that swollen over here, and the five is over here. So these two are swollen over here. But it looks like even your sacrum is involved. So if that foundation goes out, it's gonna make this unstable over here. It may aggravate, and that's why you have some trouble doing shin, uh, you know, doing jogging, get those shin splints right away. Right. Now, another thing also in terms of uh, the shin splints, okay, this is also from my personal experience as well. If there is, if your pelvis is imbalanced, okay, then what happened is your body try to adapt to it because our pelvis itself, It's not just, you know, like one dimensional structure like what we see in the X-ray over here. Okay? This is actually three dimensions and you need to pit all three dimensional axes. So if this thing is not leveled and centered, okay, then what happens is, biomechanically, that transfers all straight down to your knees, your ankle, the legs, all that stuff. So that therefore, if there's significant enough pelvic tilt, it can aggravate, irritating the nerve supply from here, 
right down to the anterior tibialis muscles, which is the muscles for shin splints. Right? So I'm gonna confirm all the hunches because right now we've got so many things going on with you. So one step at a time is low back pain into the shin splints and into your knees and feet. So knees, usually fourth lumbar nerve involvement, but your feet, okay, and especially the outside over here, because the class arch over here, this is sacral nerve. Because fourth lumbar nerve is usually here, fifth lumbar nerve is over here, and these are sacral nerves. So since we have a class arch over here, sacral nerve involvement. So yeah, we're gonna start piecing everything all together. So we got a potential sacral nerve over here, you know, fourth and fifth lumbar nerve issues the sacral nerves and the fourth lumbar nerve for the knees. Yes, so we're gonna start piecing all of it and we're gonna start ruling out says, you know, in terms of hunches, says, what do we really need to address? Yes, sir. Okay. So therefore, because we have so many of these variables, okay, so to help isolate and narrow things down, that's why we use this instrument over here. So anything that's with a damaged tissue is gonna cause that inflammatory response and the telltale sign is gonna be increased or more of a change in temperature. So as long as we're gonna mark these levels and it's gonna tell us, says, okay, these are some areas we probably wanna take a closer look at. Okay, and I believe I saw one right here. Yeah, that tiny little fella right there. See, so everything's all heat reading straight down here because of a little core pressure from there. So whenever we have core pressure on that sixth dorsal from here downwards, there might be inferiority on that vertebrae over there. got the second dorsal here and right there to the sixth or fifth we'll take a look. How's this feeling? Any tenderness? Yeah. Yeah. What do I hear? Not as much. Not too bad. What do I hear? Yep. Yeah. Which was worse? The left side? Yep. Or the middle? Oh no, the left side. Well, that's interesting. See this thing is not too not too happy here. Tender right there? Yep. See, because like, this is why I'm able to isolate a little more is because, granted, there's still some swelling here and I feel some swelling over here, mm -hmm. but it's not as much over here in the sacrum over here. That's why this is more of a better candidate to identify better than your left hip. Okay. All right. I'm also overlaying the data because that's what I'm extracting. I'm looking at your x-rays. I'm creating that three-dimensional image overlay in my mind with your spine and correlating with the data here. See, your fifth lumbar is not too great. Fourth one is kind of decent here. Pain here? Yep. Yeah. And this one? Yep. But which one's worse, the bottom? Yep, the bottom one. Or the top? The bottom one there, huh? Yeah. yeah. So that fifth lumbar, that's a, that's, a, that's another candidate to go with as well. See, there's a little boggy here, right in that sixth dorsal right there. It's also seeing the film as well. How's that, tender? Yeah. Yeah, see, this is also inferior, just like uh, just like a cold right here. So I'm not surprised about that core pressure. That's what we saw that the nervous scope reading just stayed on the five points to the, to the left, all the way straight down to here. Because this thing over here is like pretty much like you have a major traffic jam on the highway. This fella just won't cooperate. He won't send enough data down, up and down that way. And the second dorsal, see, this is not going into a either. And you got a little side slip. See, that's not moving too well. So when the second dorsal vertebrae, when that misaligns, okay, biomechanically and neurologically, it deals with the with this SC joint, not the AC. AC is over here. Mm -hmm. SC joints right over here. This is not moving. See, your AC is moving just fine. Right. SC right here, not moving. This is stuck. It's not moving up or down. And checking your left side. See, so you can move it up. See, it's not moving downwards. Right. So that tells me even more data is telling me that second dorsal, we want to investigate that fella. Mm. Feel that knot right there? Yeah. Yeah. But more so on the, on the right hand side. Yeah. Yeah, see? It, 
So you have a swollen joint capsule right here. So now let's check how things are moving. How's that pillow right there? It's tight. Tender right there? Yeah. What right here? The one above? The one right below it? Oh, um, sure. Right below that six cervical. Okay. Okay, that's interesting enough. Now the reason I'm checking over here is because the fifth and sixth cervical nerve roots goes to your elbow. So now we gotta check are we doing are we doing with a golfer's elbow or a tennis elbow? Pain right here? Yep. Or pain on here? Not too much. Not too much. So it's interesting enough that you have a it's on, even though you're seeing if time to time pain's on the inside. Right. All the exam data I'm seeing goes like this is swollen right here. Right. So it shouldn't be puffy like this. So when I take a look over here, see this over here? There's nothing. Right. See this over here? It's all swollen right mm -hmm. there. Pain here, right? Right. So you have a lateral ulnar over here that's out. So this one, we're gonna, I'm gonna double check on that on the x-ray as well. Oh, yeah. I'm doing these out too. All right, let's start piecing everything together over here. All right. Wow, we definitely got a lot of stuff going on in the list. So we're talking about right elbow, we're talking about the right wrist, you know, the right knee, the right ankle, I'm sorry, left ankle, right, okay. And also low back pain and shin splints. Yep. Oh, and also deviated septum. Yep. So, wow, that's a long laundry list of stuff to go through. So therefore, I said, okay, let's tackle one step at a time. Let's think about this, hmm, what's going on with the left shoulder, okay? And I'm trying to compare from this to this. They're not the same, right? This is deviated outwards. So we got a superior lateral scapula over here. So you know, that fellow, we're gonna address that one. But again, I also wanna take a look in terms of nerve function wise. I see everything started to you know, lean over this way. And there's a gap right over there. It's just wedging on the left-hand side. So there's clearly, because it's swollen on the left-hand side over here and also on the right side over here, but it would irritate that nerve onto that left scapula. So I couldn't explain why you've been having some problems when you try to do that lift over here, extension and external rotation. So when I take a, when I look over here, we actually got two problems over here. Okay, this sixth cervical over here, okay, that's swollen, but this fifth cervical, that disc is swollen even more. Right. So right now your current visit is that it's telling us no, we need to address this one first before we tackle number five. Okay. So we may have to address that in a future visit. Addressing down here, the second dorsal, this is swollen quite a bit on the back over here. And this bone over here, I don't wanna see it you know, slipping off, but it's deviating towards this way a bit. So this one also, but it's also the way he's doing it, it's, it's an interesting twist going that direction. Like, sort of like going like that way, okay? Like, like this direction. So since it's doing that direction, it's gonna jam up. That's why like when I test you biomechanically, it says, hey, what's going on? This SC joint is not moving too well over here. And it's kind of half moving on the left-hand side. It's because of that fall over there. Gotcha. So then we trace back even more. So we've got this twist over here and another twist over here. And this kind of twist over here, that's what we got for that six dorsal over there. We identified that needs to be addressed. In addition to, you also see it yourself, these ribs, see that, they're parallel. But once we get to number six over here, see that? Yeah. You know, they're not level, it's not the same. Right. So that's six dorsal, that's why this fellow over here, that's a candidate that, that we need to address over there. Okay. And then, uh, right, you mentioned your consultation, but I think I don't think we got that, uh, you know, the show off. You explain about what's going on with that? Yeah, so ever since I've see it over here. been like a little kid, uh -huh. I've had this going on with like my rib here, I don't know. Uh -huh. I don't imagine that's normal, but um, I mean, it doesn't really cause me pain. It just like juts out kind of weirdly here. Mm -hmm. um, I want to so see a little better of the lighting yep. over here. So like, yeah, I can see that. See, it's nice and smooth here. It's really protruding out here. Right. That's a left front rib over here. Mm, see, we can see this. See it over here? Yep. Spacing over here. This is not the same spacing. Right. So, right, just floating the rib over here, yeah, that's, that's also, yeah, that's in trouble over here. So, 
Is that anything that can be done from that, or is that just like a birth thing? It's not a birth thing. It's possible trauma to it. Okay. You know, to this rib over here. Okay. So I'm gonna take a look. You know, we may have to, you know, gonna revisit this. Right. After we address this part, I wanna revisit this. See, maybe we need to address that. Maybe not. Okay. Um, because another thing is this. It's also is a bit warped. So we'll, we'll see. Gotcha. We'll see. I'm not, not making any promises on that one because your body kind of adapted to it. Right. And when I trace even further down over here, okay, I want to see some healthy disc sizes over here. Okay. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Now we see some decent discs over here, but when we get over here, this disc gets a little more thinner. Okay. The height for this one is shrunk. Right. It's not a normal size, so you lost a good, I say, rough ballpark, just fifty percent of it gone over there. And then when we trace even further on. I know it's a little hard to see because it's a little whited out over here, but there's that little posterior open gap wedge right over here. So as a result of that little instability in your foundation itself, it's sort of like you, sort of like as the Bible says, you know, this, you know, foolish man build his house on top of a sandy foundation. Right. So our lumbar spine, no room is supposed to be like this, but if the foundation right below it moves too much, what's going to happen? It's moving right. way too much, and it's going to grind us away. Gotcha. So that's what's happening on this case over here. So whenever I see something like this, either the process is going to be this itself or there's something going on the foundation. So when we go even more to the foundation, I'm also seeing the sacrum over here, normal angle should be 45 degrees, but instead it's way backwards like this. Hmm. So that tells me, oh, okay, so either there's some kind of issue with that second, you know, one of the sacrum segments or the sacrum itself or this ASIN, pelvis misalignment. So then we trace over here. How's the pelvis itself? Is it is a normal alignment? Well, here's the thing. Here's your left side, but your right side is sinking downwards like this. Right. Okay. And yes, there's quite a bit of a tilt. Okay. So this is actually tilting forward as well. Okay. And also tilting inwards in your pelvis. So there is this is an ASIN, and we got a PIX on this side. So that's what makes me even more gives another part where hmm this is interesting why you may be having a shin splint is because you may have an anatomical short right leg oh wow the way biomechanics works is this when this hip is so when it goes backwards okay it should drop on the left hand side yours did the opposite it actually raised huh okay exactly so whenever i see something that dropped i'm expecting a pi EX or PIX type of misalignment on that right hip. It's the opposite, it's the ESIN. So why is it doing that? So when it gets short like this, okay, when there's an ASIN misalignment, the body, what it does is this, since you cannot grow another bone in there, so the body says, hey, wait a second, how can I compensate? How can I make this level out? It will deliberately misalign it into an anterior superior and internal rotation in here to try to raise it up. Understood. To make it kind of even out. Correct. As best as possible. But there's limits to it. Right, right. right. So therefore, whenever I see an ASIN on a short, you know, on a short side over there, that tells me, no, you have an anatomical short leg on that one. Okay. Or by some weird, freaky, dicky, you know, thing, you're deliberately like limping on that side. <laughs> right. But, you know, we didn't see that when right. we were taking your x-rays. So you may need a heel lift over here. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that like, I'm getting 100% oh, we're going to put a heel up there right away, but it could also explain why you've been having those shin splints as well. So what we're going to do is this, I know you, know, you drove over from Philly, but I hope in future visits, as we start stabilizing this pelvis, eventually I'm going to have a good idea how much millimeters of that heel that we need to give you to start leveling you out, so it'll also help calm down those shin splints. Understood. All right. So that's what's going to be the tactical battle for this fellow over here. So. You know, that second sacred segment, we're going to take care of that. The fifth lumbar over here, we're also going to take care of that. I'll calm down the nerves to your knees, ankles, and the shin splints as well. For that deep fibular nerve over there involvement. The sixth dorsal, that second dorsal, and sixth cervical, and that fifth cervical in the future visit. Now, the right elbow itself, this is what I'm seeing over here. Okay, that leads credence to that, you know, to that lateral ulna we were talking about before. Is because, see over here, it's nice and level over here. But I'm seeing it's a little more swollen over here. So yeah, we got a lot of ulnar, so we're gonna adjust that fellow. Now in terms of the 
the wrist itself, okay? This is your lunate, okay? This bone itself, actually, I want to see it a little more this way. Hmm. This part should line up more here. It's twisted that way. Is that why I can't go back as far? Bingo. That's okay. the reason why. Understood. So we got that component. And then over here, when I take a look at this, see, I want to see a double arc rainbow. Okay. I don't see that. It's just a little break in here. It's shifted this way. When I look over here, it's even more prominent. You could really see it twisted out, rotated that direction over there. Yep. So yeah, that lunate, that's the big reason why you can't extend that wrist at all. Understood. So we're going to take care of that fella. Take a look at your left foot. Right? I remember you said everything is compromised. Your talus, okay, it's a little bit higher. It should be level with everything else over here. In addition to, see this? It should be parallel lines, like over here. See this? It's like decently parallel. Right, right. See, there's a much more taller gap over here. Yeah, and then over here. Narrow. You got it. So that tells me this bone over here, it rotated this way. And that's what altered the biomechanics because even your calcaneus bone, the heel bone, also tilted too much this way. And that's what caused this keyboard over here to drop down. This is your fifth metatarsal bone also to drop down even more. And we can see that compared to your right. The right one is not as dropped down as much. So you tell us it's almost level, but it still there's a gap here. Right, right. But you see your calcaneus is not as elevated this way. Yeah. See, it's also parallelized over here. And the spacing looks better on this one right here, right? You got it. Yeah. So that's why your keyboard and your fifth metal tarsal over here is not as bad compared to your left one, like over here. And you also you see even the calcaneus over here, there's also increased joint swelling over here. So that's what we're going to address as well. Gotcha. In terms of the deviated septum, okay, now if we're talking about cosmetically trying to change that, okay, yeah, it's pretty much hard, difficult to fix that one, so I'm not making any promise on that. But you should have a good, pretty good track record helping try to open up that breathing passage itself, help you breathe even more, because I do see it says, wow, is this over here? It seems to be, there really is an old fracture in there, because it's not one solid bone in there. Now we've got two pieces. This top part, you move this way, this bottom part went to the right. So that's why. That's what you're seeing that deviated. That's why you see that nose over there is going two different directions. Yeah. That's why I'm telling you this actually may need to be have some cosmetic surgery, plastic surgery, to try to repair that out itself. Uh, you do have some sinus issues because this is supposed to be nice darker black. Really? But what I'm seeing here, this is all nothing but pus debris buildup on your know, maxillary sinus over here. And this is also you know, a little higher up. You know, it's a little hard to see, but you also got some frontal sinus issues as well and all that other fun stuff as well. Okay, so let's get to work. Yes, Any other things you notice that causes the shin splints? Um, I've always just thought that I need to do better about like my ankles, like uh, doing more stretches, but this right ankle is not really as strong. I, I've rolled it and sprained it a few times, mm -hmm. and I've always just thought it just because I've had weak ankles. So I don't know if it's that lately here. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing a lot of stretching to try to help with the shin splits, but it, it really hasn't helped. But it has helped with the ankle, so I what don't know. About, what about when you do calf raises? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, like doing a lot of that. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like it's helped with the uh, ankle instability mm -hmm. some, but not as much with the shin splits. Not much with shin splits. Mm -hmm. Okay. So try to remember what that calf raises feel like, all right? Yeah. Well, let's get your part. Like this, all right? Here's a piece. Oh, there's that fella. Walk around. Okay, now I'll try to do the calf raises. Whoa. <laughs> That's pretty cool. What's whoa cool about it? I don't feel it on the front part of my uh, my shin here. I just now I just feel it like an actual just in my calves. Not no tightness here. Okay, that's pretty what about, good. What about the left one? You said sometimes the left shin splints happen too. Yeah, there's I don't feel anything in this one now at all. This is completely gone. Yeah, that's good. This one I can just feel tightness in my like normal just stretching in my calf uh -huh. and uh, not much in my right. Feels good. That's pretty good, thanks. Oh, you're welcome, Appreciate man. It. Yeah. So now we're gonna double check, see if we even need to address this. See, instrument reading's going down quite a bit. 
How's this falling now? No, there's not any pain in there. So you remember last time when I just tested this thing? You were yeah. saying, oh, that was painful, right? Yeah. How's that now? No, there's not any pain in there. Nothing there, right? Uh -uh. I see it's also pivoting, moving just well. Right. So that second sacral segment, that's what we're going to take care of. And this fifth lumbar, we're going to leave it alone. So you want to dress that rib just for your girlfriend, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hear that. You know, some ladies care about the abs or the muscles, but no, <laughs> your woman cares about the rib. Exactly. What's going on with that? Are we going to pass that on to our kids or something? Or I can see the priority with that woman. <laughs> yeah, we're ready to start settling down. Gotcha. Okay. All right, I'll tell you what. Well, this 11th dorsal, you know, it didn't, it didn't recompensate because biomechanically, when this thing goes out, okay, what happened is this thing is like twist, it's rotating and twisting this way. Right. So this body, this part, what it does is rotate this way. That's right. why you feel the front part of that rib sticking out. So you can stand, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so you can stand what I'm talking about over here. Yep. So basically what's going on, as I explained before, your sake of that little part, it rotated your pelvis this way. But the problem is when you go like this way, you're not going to walk this way. Right. Okay. Because you're not going to walk with a rotated body this way. Because you have two joints to the head, it has to just basically center and level itself here. So it kind of twists right here, going forward this way. That's where you feel this thing sticking out even more. Gotcha. That tells me even more that since it's been sticking out that long, that pelvis problem, that's not a major problem. It's been there for a very, very long time. Gotcha. Ever since you've been having that rib pain, and that rib, you know, thing sticking out, that's how you've been having that pelvis problem. Gotcha. All right? So now, here's the thing though. Because we addressed your second sacral segment, and your body did not readapt. By the way, how does that feel for you in the rib right now? Did it change in your mind? Or no, no, no pain or anything, but also uh, it doesn't feel like much has changed now. I kind of figured because it's been stuck for that, you know, like yeah. wound it up like this, you know, twisted up for so long. It needs a little extra help. Yeah. So let's go ahead and twist a little more. Yep. Oh. Whoa. Come on up. Yeah, that's. That'll wake you up. Tell me, how's that good now? Whoa. <laughs> oh man, that's really good. Yeah, it feels like it's like, like more in. Um, I can breathe a lot better too, and I can stand better too. That's that was awesome. Thank you, Doc. That was. Pretty good. You got it, brother. Thank you. Oh, You're man. Welcome. Okay. Ready for the rest? Yes, let's do it. Let's do it, bro. Yes, yeah, sir. And this is inferiority, right? Oh, yeah. This is very inferior. Let it go. Drop shoulders. Oh, there's that fella. Let's retest this. Does he need to go? Hey, how's yeah. this feel for you? That's yeah, good. What's different about it? It can, it's moving up and it's like gliding better, like you're talking about. Yeah, this is, the SC joint's moving better, but it's still locking up a bit. Yeah. Let's see how your left one's doing. Mm. Tell me what's different about this one. Yeah, it's moving freer. Like before, I could feel tense. Yeah, I could feel, I don't even feel that tenseness in my trap as much. That's pretty sure. good. Yeah, because that sixth dorsal, the inferiority, what it did was it shifted the biomechanics of your second dorsal. So it's taking some of the biomechanical tension off of this fellow over here. But it, I believe it need, still needs a little helping hand. Gotcha. So let's take a look at that second dorsal. Yeah. Feel that? Yeah, right there. Yep. It's this angle right there. See, it's mostly resolved, but not fully. It's just a smaller, smaller vector right there. Yep. That's what we need to address right there. Right there. There's that sweet spot, right? Booyah! Now let's check. Mmm. What's different about it now? It's everything's like gliding, and there's no uh, there's no t tightness. Like I can just move loosey goosey, you know. Yeah, right. And it feels good. Well, let's check your scapula. See, the scapula is moving better. Yeah. Okay, you can stand up and let me, sh let me see that again. Yep. 
Okay, go ahead and reach behind you. Okay, let's do this one. Actually, let's get the lighting a little bit better mm -hmm. here. Okay, yeah, better lighting. Okay, go ahead, try again. See, this is moving a little more, but it's still jammed up over here. Yeah. Try this one. Okay, so we still got work. Let's go ahead and unlock that scapula. Yep, superior lateral scap. A little more and got most of it, a little piece left. Wow, this is I really jammed it here, brother. Oh, there it is. Come on up. Okay, go ahead. Reach behind. How do you like it now? That's a lot better. Alright. That's like a million times better. I think there's six cervical. It's right there. I'm gonna set it. Let it go. Let it go. Like that. Come on up, brother. Now I'll try the left shoulder. <laughs> I can feel it higher up on my back mm -hmm. than before. That's what I'm saying. We've got more nerve function going to this shoulder blade now. How's this now? Not as painful, honestly. Yeah, because again, we restore more nerve function. Yeah. It fits cervical and six cervical nerve roots go to over here. So that's why it's very important and vital we get the nerves restored to these areas. Because we can adjust these things all day long, it's gonna have a hard time staying put. So that's why it's so vital to get those nerves working again. So first things first, we're gonna pump all this fluid out of the way because it's been sold for quite some time here. Okay, and then we're gonna nice, make a nice deep set. Okay, relax, relax a little. Ooh, Nelly, you really knocked us out. Yeah. Okay, no, let it go. Relax shoulder, relax shoulder. No, I'm gonna relax a little. We're gonna set this. Relax a little. Whoa, dude, you really jammed this out. Okay, yeah. we're gonna go a little hardcore. Yep. Okay. Yeah, stand up. Yep. Just reserve this for the for the worst cases, and that's what you got over here. Let it go. There it is. Breathe. Try the elbow. Thank you. Oh yeah, that's good. Do you hear that clunking? Though I don't know if that's just me and my shoulder no, or those. No, no, no. Your radius is out. Ah. So there's two bones in here, okay? So we got the ulnar and we got the radius. So we do an overlay over here, it's just like this. So what I just set you over here was this bone right over here. Okay, we set this bone in here, but also you can see it's close together. The radius over here, this one, I could tell while you're supinating and pronating, that means you know, you're know twisting this way and that way, this is not moving along with that lunate. Okay, so what we're gonna do is this, we're gonna set this this, ra this radius, pump it up. Okay. Yeah, I could hear that lunate click yeah. clicking in there, right? Okay. Now we're gonna get this lunate in there. There we go. There's that lunate. Your thumb's out. Yeah, it is. Let it go. Let's set this down. Right. There it is. Now let's check your. Now I'll give that elbow a try. I can't wait to go work out later and check this out. Am I, will it be fine to work out, you think? Well, you told me, man. Yeah, it feels really good. Like, I, I can't wait to go actually try to do some, like, uh, tricep pushdowns and stuff. Like, there's no, even the swelling feels like it's, start, it's like, already, like, gone down right here. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you so much. That oh, was been like that for years, man. That's awesome. Years? Yeah. That's way too long. Yeah. 
Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Because I kind of figured, because of that trauma, you hit, you know, impact all this, it actually knocked all the kinetic, you know, that kinetic chain mechanism right there. We just had to restore all of it. Man, that thing was a mess. Yeah, thank you so much. Ah, that was good. I feel really good. I feel, I feel like I'm standing up straighter, like I'm like taller almost. I appreciate it. See, this is really different here. See, it's, it's kind of loosey goosey here, right. not like before. See, it's stable on this side. So, if it's stable here, that means you know, the femur is not a problem. But if it's loose over here, not a stable, then yeah, we've got a tibia involvement over here. Gotcha. You feel that right there? Mm hmm. See, your joint capsule is very swollen right over here. So we've got a nice little baker cyst over here. So we're gonna pop this up first before we set this thing. There you go. Now we're ready to rock and roll. There you go. Just one, a little more. Got a little more out of it. One little piece. There it is. Okay, walk around. Try, do a squat, see how you look at the knees now. Yeah, it feels cooked. One of the other things that I was noticing that I had been doing to kind of help out when I'm squatting mm -hmm. is I was opening this right leg up more to the right side. Mm -hmm. And I think it was probably what you were talking about or earlier. And now I feel like I can be more balanced and my feet pointed straight forward. It doesn't, doesn't feel like my knee is gonna collapse inward like that. Mm. Huh. Actually, put your feet a little closer to the head here. Yeah. Huh. Hey, how do you like that? Look at the outside arch. Yeah. yeah it's not as bulging out as right. before. You notice that? Yep. Yeah, even your transverse arch. It's not too bad. So we've got some more sacral nerve function on that fellow. That's a good thing. Nice. That's good. Let's take a look at your feet. Yep. Whenever we work on the feet itself, all right, I want to make sure that the biomechanics are intact. Okay? How are things in terms of the inside middle arches, the transverse arches, and the outside lateral arches? Are they intact? So the very first fellow is the keystone bone here, the talus. All right? Once this thing collapses, everything else will collapse down effect. So in other words, the middle arch will go first, and then the transverse will collapse, and then the lateral arch class. So there, it's all a domino effect. So that's why it's very key to take a look what's going on with the talus themselves. So we test this over here, and we also talked about it before in the x-rays. Yeah, they were both misaligned, right. and that's exactly what you got over here. So we're gonna address this first. Now I'm gonna get a little more out of it. Ooh, you really jammed this up. There it is. You're making me bring the bigger guns out today, huh? <laughs> I had to do that with your elbow and not for your ankles. <laughs> right. Same thing with this one too, come on, man. <laughs> oh, there it is. Sit this one over here. A little more. Whew. Tender right there, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, your joint caps are swollen over here, so I'm going to pump that up before I set this thing. Okay, relax. Relax. Okay, got half of it in there. Gonna get a little more deeper. Relax. There it is. Good, that's moving. Cue boys a little bit out. Just relax, no? No. Here's that fella. This cue boy is definitely out. Tender right there, huh? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. There's a piece. Yeah. There you go. Oh man, it's almost like brick wool in here. 
There we go. Flex. Oh. There it is. That was a nice clunker. Let's get your cue board out. Good. Walk around, brother. Woo. <laughs> I might be running today just to test all this out. I know I said I was going to do the gym, but this. I also feel like I'm like, uh, I, I feel like before sometimes I would kind of like walk like this and right now I'm like lifting my feet. Feels good. Yeah, uh, turn around. Yep. It's going to be nice. Oh, how do you like that? Yep. It's gone. Look at that. We have an actual decent arch on the outside arch. Yeah. The lateral arch. Nice. Oh, thank you so much. Hey, You're awesome, you're man. Good. Thank you. <laughs> I try, I try. So we're going to do what we can because I just showed you before, you know, the, the septum's actually fractured inside there. Uh, yeah. So I'm testing which angle it went. So see, it's not moving that way. Your nasal bone is really out. Yeah. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna set this bone. Oh. A little more deep, I know. That's one part, oh, that's you. part one. And I'm gonna close a little more. Oh. I know. Oh. A little more. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. That clunked in. Yep. See, your maxillary sinuses, they're all stuck. See, this, this is even more worse on the right side versus your left. Just set that in. Here's your left. So you both your frontal sinuses also. Right side stuck. Left one's not too bad. Sphenoid. Yeah, your left is a little stuck. See, it's not pivoting this direction at all. Oh, there it is. And let me see how's the nasal bone. A little bit out. I'm gonna set the. There it goes. Okay, go ahead. Try again. <laughs> Yeah, that feels like way more air is getting in there now. Like a lot more air. Feels good. Thank you. That was awesome. And I felt that clunk whenever you went this away, like it went in the right way. That was good. Thank you. But keep in mind because it's I can see it on the X-ray. It's actually fractured yeah. in there. Yeah. So no, we just like nudged it. You know, just let it snap in place a bit. Right. But it's gonna, you know, it's gonna free float. But if you want that permanently fixed, I recommend plastic surgery. Okay. Understood. So it looks like we reduced it a little bit, but you know, in terms of the twist, you know, that curvature over there. But no, if you really want a cosmetic look better, yeah, you know, plastic surgery is the way to go for that one. Gotcha. Otherwise, for breathing, no, that's awesome. pretty much it. Thank you. Thank well, you're you. You're welcome. Anything else, brother? No, that'll be it. Thanks, Doc. I really appreciate it. Hey, not a problem. <laughs> Holy shit, does. Wow. That does look straighter. My girlfriend's gonna, she's gonna notice that. She's gonna be thankful. <laughs> our uh, our wedding pictures will look a lot better with my nose straighter. <laughs> I think her priority is that rib, man. Yeah, this rib is just, I don't know what's going on there, but I appreciate it so much. How's wow. the rib doing now? I, I had honestly forgot about it right now. I didn't, I don't feel anything. Nice. Feels good. Feels really good. I think you should be more happy with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll be able to take a shirt off when we go to the pool and stuff. But <laughs> well, thank you again, Doc. I yeah, appreciate you're it. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Okay. Have a good one. Thank you, sir. So uh, the elbow is noticeably better. Um, like when I'm doing uh, shoulder presses and stuff, mm -hmm. the only thing I'm still not able to do from pain is dips. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only thing there. Right knee, both my knees have been absolutely fine. Um, no pain at all whatsoever. I actually went for like a PR squat uh, mm -hmm. max and that was great. I was happy to wow. yeah feel confident that I could do that. Um, foot, uh, both of them perfectly fine. No issues there. Haven't felt any pain or anything like that. Um, started going uh, running a little bit and <clears throat> still some a slight shin pain, but nothing is nearly as bad as before where I could only get like a mile down the road and then I'd be like, oh, this really, really hurts. I need to stop. So that's been better. Um, and then with the hip, mm -hmm. um, just still from sitting too, too long, it starts to hurt on this side. So I'm kind of like doing this whole deal where I shift my mm -hmm. weight to the right side to kind of help with that on the 
I guess, I don't know if it's the hip or the lower back that's doing that. Um, and aside from that, I've been pretty good. Um, no other real pain. Um, like I said, just on the drive over here from sitting in the car, I was like, all right, this is starting to hurt a little bit. And I just kind of start leaning to one side to, to try to help with that. So that's about it. All right. Well, hey, that's great progress yeah. just from a first visit. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll continue working on everything else. Absolutely. Okay, thanks for the update. Yes, sir.